In this video, I will provide you with what I believe to be a simple way to create a roof rafter by tracing it if you have an unusual location for the ridge beam. And a situation where you did not use a standard roof pitch ratio to calculate the location of that ridge beam. Just make sure that everything here is plumb. And in this video, I will provide you with two different rafter layouts one that will connect to the ridge like this with a seat cut at the bottom. The other one will have two seat cuts, one at the bottom and one at the top. And since we're not following any specific roof pitch rules, we're actually going to be able to set the rafters next to the exterior wall and just simply trace out the line on our rafter pattern that needs to be cut and then use that pattern to mark the rest of the roof rafters we need for our roof. So the first thing we need to do will be to create the height of our seat cut, this measurement here. And I won't be able to provide you with that information. However, as long as this part of the rafter is sitting at least two inches on top of the beam or wall, whatever you're working with, then you shouldn't have a problem. And I say shouldn't, but you might need to check with local engineers and building authorities to verify all of these dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and come down one inch at the top and at the bottom. And you can actually change these measurements if you need to. I can come down an inch and a half here or three quarters of an inch up here because again, we're not dealing with a specific rafter pitch ratio. So let's take a look at what the rafter would look like after it's cut just to give you an idea. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing up here to provide you with a close up. Then we're going to create some type of support that we can use to lay out our roof rafters. And I just kind of wanted to give you an idea here where we're not going to be able to take a board and have it at the same height here. It's going to have to be lower because we're dealing with an angle here. And again, I won't be able to provide you with that measurement either. And if you want to, you can always put a nail or a screw in here instead of our support board. And the screw doesn't have to be at the edge. You can always move it over a little bit or down if you need a little more structural support to install the screw. And then we're simply going to use the screw or these guide boards to support the board we're going to use to trace out our roof rafter pattern. So next up, let's go ahead and remove this rafter here that already has the seat cuts on it so that we can position our straight piece of construction standard lumber. And by now you should be starting to get a pretty good idea what we're doing because all we need to do is position the board and then go around on the other side with a pencil and draw our lines here. And it will definitely help to have all of these boards in the right spot and nice and square. If not, you might need to make some adjustments to those marks. Again, our board without any notches is just simply sitting on our support boards. And again, we're just going to mark it here to create our two seat cuts that we need to create a pattern for the rest of the roof rafters. And you can always attach the board with a screw or a nail to make sure that it doesn't move, especially if you're working alone. And in our next example, we're going to lower the top of the rafter so that we can create a nice straight line for the section of the roof rafter that will be connecting to the ridge beam or roof ridge, whatever you're going to be using there. So again, our screw and our support boards should provide us with enough stability there to make sure that the rafter doesn't move while we again mark or lay out the bottom seat cut on this particular rafter. Now the next thing we need to do if all of our roof rafters are going to be the same size, for example, on a gable roof like this, where the ridge is located in the center of the building will be to cut the roof rafter pattern and then use that pattern to make sure that it will work for the rest of the building. So for example, if I cut my pattern off of this part of the building and then take it over to this part of the building and it's either too long or too short, then that might suggest that we have problems with our measurements somewhere or that something might be out of level in this direction here or it might be out of plumb in this direction here which might require you to cut another pattern 
And if you don't want to mess with that, then you could always cut each individual rafter to fit if you wanted to because sometimes the ridge might have a bow in it, it might be sagging, or it might have a big crown in it, which might require you to straighten out the ridge. And of course, you could have the same situation on the wall framing if the foundation isn't perfectly level or straight, or the wall framing studs weren't cut accurately. And hopefully some of this made sense. Now in the second part of the video, I'm gonna provide you with a method you can use to calculate the post height for a ridge beam where you would be using roof pitch ratios. Here is a video that will be helpful for anyone who needs to figure out the post height that will be supporting a ridge beam for either new construction or even remodeling. And the height of the walls will not matter because we will be adjusting for them depending upon whether or not the post goes all the way down to the bottom plate on the first floor framing or whether it is going to be sitting on top of the floor sheathing like we have here. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a strand However, most carpenters aren't going to use a string. They're just simply going to measure from one point to another point and then do their calculations. However, if there are any variations in the concrete footing or any part of the framing, then you could end up being off a little bit depending upon those variations. And something that might cause those variations would simply be assembling a section like this with multiple pieces to where on one side of the building you might end up with a section without any gaps in it at all and really tight framing. However, on the other side, you might have a gap between the bottom of the plywood and the top of the joist. And something like this can create problems when you're going to be using more than two posts or trying to make everything work perfectly. So the first thing on our list we will need to accomplish will be to gather some type of a reference point. And in this case, it will be from the string to the top of the bottom plate. And this measurement should be the same for the walls on each side. Now, even though you wouldn't have done this yet, let's just go ahead and run through some of the measurements that I have already created from our scaled model, including what the rafters would look like. Take a look at the bottom, and this is very important here because in order for the method that I'm going to show you in this video to work, the bottom measurement here or the plumb measurement will need to be the same at the bottom as it is at the top. And if it isn't and you are going to make it different, then simply subtract the difference or add the difference to the height of the post. And another thing I want to point out, we are not going to be going to the center of the post with this one. However, we will need to figure out the position of the post and where it's going to be located. And in order to do that, you're going to measure the overall span of the building. Because keep in mind, none of this stuff is going to be here. So measure from the outside to the outside and then divide that measurement by two and then subtract half the thickness of the post because the post is going to be located in the center of the building. And then once you have figured out the location of the post, you can go ahead and measure from this point to this point, which will be the same as from this point to this point. And then this is the number right here we are going to use to calculate the height of this distance here or the distance from the top of the string to the top of the ridge. So let's go ahead and break out our trusty calculator and the roof pitch we are going to be using will be an 8 and 12 roof pitch. So the first thing I want to do is multiply 9 times 8 because for every one foot we go horizontally we're going to go up 8 inches vertically. So let's multiply 9 times 8 to give us 72. And then you can go ahead and write that number down on a piece of paper. And then in order to convert the 10 and a quarter inches to a decimal that will represent feet, we will simply divide 10.25 and then hit the divide symbol. And then we're going to divide that into 12. And then we're going to take this decimal here and then multiply it times eight 
to give us 6.83. And 6.83 is going to be somewhere between 6 and 3 quarters and 6 and 7 eighths of an inch. Now if I add 72 to this, I'm going to get 78.83 or 6 foot 6 and 7 eighths inches, providing us with the difference between the top of the beam and the top of the wall framing and the measurement we need to calculate the overall length of our post. And in order to do that, we can simply add these two numbers together to provide us with the overall height. And then we can go ahead and subtract the height of the ridge beam from that measurement to get the height of the post. And to figure out the post height on the other side, all we would need to do would be to measure from the top of the framing plate to the top of the bottom plate or the section that the post is going to be sitting on. For example, if the post was going to be sitting on top of a post base connector, then we would be measuring from the top of the post base connector to the top of the framing plate or the top of the string, and then adding the difference that we have calculated here to those measurements to find that post height. And we could do the same with the post in the center by using a string or measuring from the wall framing, or we could simply use the measurement for this post here and add an inch and a half to it, or add the thickness of the wall framing plate to provide us with the length of this post. And if this was going to be a full length beam, we could simply install the beam first and then measure the post. And that, my friends, is how I would figure out a post in the center with a full length beam. And if all of that makes sense, then you can stop watching right now. However, for those of you who need a little more information or you're looking for an example that starts without a roof, or any posts or any rafters, let's go ahead and start with this. And since we need to figure out the point from the post to the outside of the wall, as I mentioned in the video, we will need the overall length of the building. And this measurement will be from the outside of the wall on one side all the way through to the outside wall on the other side. And then we're going to divide this number by half so that we can find the center of the building. And the center of the building is also going to be the center of the post. However, it will not be the measurement that we are going to use because we're going to need to subtract half of the width of the post. So if our post is going to be three and a half inches, we're going to need to subtract half of that, which will be one and three quarter inches. And this is the point of reference we are going to use to figure out the difference in the height of the top of the wall framing where the rafter is going to be sitting on top of and the top of the post where the other end of the rafter is going to be sitting on top of. Next up, let's go ahead and make things a little simpler by getting rid of the building and then starting with a four and 12 pitch. So what I've done here is used my scaled model to figure out the difference before I break the calculator out. Now this is a four and 12 pitch, which means that we're going to take the number nine and multiply it by four four. And then we're going to write this number down on a piece of paper. Now we're going to clear that and then take 10 and a quarter inches, which as a decimal will be 10.25. And then we're going to divide that by 12. And this decimal here will represent 10 and a quarter inches in our measurement. So I'm going to take this number here and multiply it times four and then add 36 to it. And I'm pretty sure this decimal here is going to convert to this number here almost right on the money and provide you with an example of how you can calculate a roof that is going to have a pitch with a 4 to 12 ratio or for every 12 inches of measurement we're going to go up 4 inches or for every 2 feet we're going to go up 8 inches and 3 feet we're going to go up 12 inches so that ratio can be used to calculate the height that we're going to need to figure out the length of our ridge post. Now, if you have any questions at all, or if there's something I missed, or there's a mathematical error in one of my video examples, then feel free to let us know in the comment area. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy our videos and want to see more of them.